Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on today is basically starting a new document. Uh, we're going to be creating some basic shapes. Uh, we're going to be going into layers and how those uh, shapes work in there, a couple things to watch out for, and also how to make some changes should you need to do so. All right, now we're going to start off by going to a basic letter uh, document. Just going to take a moment or two. There we go. Since we're not going to be saving this, and this is just for, doc for uh, demonstration purposes only, I'm not going to get too crazy with this. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about the interface while we're here as well. Uh, basically, once again, we're in the Essentials uh, preset. If you hit the drop down over here, you'll see a bunch of extra elements uh, that we could choose, some specifically for uh, specific purposes like painting and typography and such. But since we're keeping it simple, we keep it to Essentials. Uh, now, this is a place where uh, the properties is basically all the basic information you're going to need. So if you do need to change the measurements, you could do so here. If you need to change the artboards, uh, there are elements that you could do with this, uh, but we're going to skip that for now. And a couple of other areas that we're going to see. Now, something to keep in mind with the properties area is when you change different uh, tools, like for example, right now we're in the regular selection tool, or V is in victory key. This is what we're going to see. But if we go into our shapes, which could be found right over here, just going to give this a quick little click, you'll see that there's a lot of different options that all of a sudden appear. This is normal and okay. And we're just going to go with this. Now, in terms of the, your first shape, uh, we basically have a little rectangle here. Now we just basically click and drag the shape until we have the actual look that we want. So if you want something rectangular, you can have it like this. Now, something to keep in mind, and this is something I want to talk about as well, is basically how these different shapes come to be and a couple of things to watch out for. So I'm going to select my selection tool again. Again, you can hit V as in victory. Later on in my lectures, I'm just going to be hitting V or whatnot, or hit the selection tool like so. Now, in terms of how this begins, uh, the elements that are inside here, basically with inside the actual rectangle, this is what's called the fill. And if you click here, you'll see some elements that you can uh, select uh, to basically change the color. And there's a lot of really nice little presets that you can go with. I'd recommend, at least for the beginning, to keep it simple. If you do want to get a little bit more complicated, uh, there are ways to do this. Uh, by the way, all these are called swatches. And if you want to make your own custom color, there is a color mixer that's over here and you can change it over like so. Now, there are going to be other ways that we can change the color, but again, I'd like to try and keep it a little simple today. And we're just gonna change this to blue. And take a look at that, that's looking pretty nice. So once again, the inner area over here is called the fill. Now, the little line that's going around like here is what's called the stroke, this little black line over here. So if I click here, uh, once again, you'll see my little interface for the properties changes. I can uh, give this a quick little click. And once again, I could change any of the colors that we see over here. Or alternatively, uh, there's this little option at the, over here. It looks like a diagonal uh, line uh, that says none. If I click this instead, that little part goes away. And likewise, if I hit the color black, it comes back. Now, the same deal applies for the fill. That little diagonal line is over here. I click none, basically goes away. If I hit the color over here, it comes back. So no fuss, no muss. Now, if you do wish to change some elements when it comes to the actual stroke, uh, you may do so by going to the actual little area that we have over here. This is basically where we could change the measurements via uh, points. And the higher the number, obviously, the more thick the line's gonna be. That's normal and okay. If you have an exact number that you wanna put in, uh, you can either hit the drop down over here, choose your points, or alternatively, just go in here and just erase all the information and just put the number that you wish and hit return. Again, relatively easy peasy. Now, uh, one last part, although this is not gonna be as much of a factor now, but it can be helpful later. If we want to add a little fade effect on this, we could also go to the opacity and turn this down a little bit. And you'll see that the color, uh, both for the stroke and the fill, begin to fade a little bit. This is normal and okay. But again, we really don't need something like that. 
So that's the basics on at least how to make something like a rectangle over here. Now let's get a little bit more accurate with this. So I'm going to actually create a new rectangle, but here's a big difference. If I hold down the shift key while I do this, so again, just holding down the shift key, you'll notice that uh, the uh, numbers for the X and Y come up here. You'll notice if you click and drag while holding the shift that uh, the actual shape is completely uh, squarish. And this is actually helpful if you did want to make a perfect square. And the moment I let go of the mouse, then let go of the shift, we have the square like so. So again, if something needs to be perfectly square, holding down the shift will help you with this. Also note that if you hold down the uh, Alt key and click and drag like so, uh, you'll be basically making it from the middle instead. Let me show you again what basically is going to happen. Oh, by the way, Control Z or Edit Undo is probably going to be one of your best friends in here. Now I hit Control for here because I am using Windows, but I believe it would be Command Z for anyone who's going to be using an Apple. Now, if I hold down once again, if I don't hold down the uh, Alt, I'm sorry, uh, you'll see that it basically has full freedom. But if I hold down the Alt, it's uh, going to be basically be made in the middle like so. So again, depending on how you want to make this, will determine on how you go with this. Also note, if you hold down the Shift and uh, Shift and Alt, both these will come up at the same time. Quite helpful for us. So that's basically what I want to do, at least in this case. Now, if you need 100% accuracy in terms of the shape, like for example, it absolutely must be a certain uh, measurement and so on. Uh, so for this, I'm just basically going to go back to my regular selection so I can go back to my default here. And temporarily, I'm going to put this to centimeters because, oh, actually, strike that. I'm going to go to pixels. So say that I need a box that I'm going to be working with a particular kind of measurement uh, and it has to be a certain size. Well. If I select my rectangle, give it a quick little click, you'll see that I can choose the actual number that I need. Now, once again, don't click and drag, just give it a quick little tap on the mouse, and boom, you could basically make it whatever size that you wish. And presto. Now, something I just want to remind everybody is I made this box first, this box is second, and I'm going to change the color to help prove a point. This box was third. Oop. Just going to go back over here. I accidentally double clicked a little too much. We'll get back into that a little later. This one's going to be green, and this one is going to be uh, yellow. All right, so we have four different colors. There's a reason for this. Now, something to kind of keep in mind is whatever was made first is going to basically be behind anything that comes after it. So, this little blue rectangle will not go in front of either this box or this one or this one because it was made first. Likewise, because I made this box last, if I click and drag this over, you'll see that it goes beyond this. And that's basically how the shape creation works when we first do this. Now, should you wish to change this, and I would probably recommend that some people do, uh, you can go to a little layer area over here. This little tab will bring this up and you'll see everything uh, that's in that particular layer. Now, the way that this works is whatever is the last thing made, it's gonna be on the top part of over here. In terms of pecking order, anything that's at the top will have priority over anything that's at the bottom. So that's why a rectangle over here, technically it's kind of squarish, but they call it a rectangle, uh, looks like so. And that's why this blue area looks the way that it does as well. Now this can be changed as well, but we'll get to that. One thing I would recommend uh, first-timers do is if you do have the option, uh, you can click and drag the layers out. I'm just basically selecting the tab and then letting go. It just makes things a little bit easier when you're working this way. So you have the properties area able to be seen and you have your layers area able to be seen. Now, if you ever need to bring this back to stock, you can always go to Essentials, Reset Essentials. So again, Essentials, Reset Essentials and it goes back to stock. Nicely done, relatively easy. But again, I want to see the layer, so I'm bringing this out again. Bam. Okay. Now, again, I'm just going to have experiment a little bit with these three different shapes. 
I'll leave the green over here in the corner for now. Now, if for whatever reason, I want this rectangle to have more priority over the other shapes. If I click and drag this up, and again, I'm just selecting this first, then click and drag that up. It's now on the topmost layer, so that has the most priority. And likewise, if I bring these yellow all the way to the bottom, it now has the least priority. These are important things to remember when you're making your different shapes as we progress. So that's pretty much it, at least in terms of the layers. This is going to be elements we're going to be going over and over again. Now, should you need to, and this will probably be necessary at least a couple times, if you click your shape and say that you want to get rid of it, well, uh, just select the shape of choice. And by the way, something I almost forgot to mention, uh, if you have something selected, you'll see it in your little layer. Technically, this is the sublayer area highlighted with this little box over here. But uh, now that I have this, I'm going to delete because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to get rid of this one too. Okay. Now, showed you guys the basics for this. I'm going to show you some other shapes over here. Uh, the next one I'm going to show is ellipse. Same deal. Click and drag. Uh, basically, you can uh, click and drag it like so. If you hold down the shift key, it'll be made in a perfect circle. If you hold down the alt key, it's basically going to be made from wherever you first started your click. And if you hold Alt and Shift at the same time, this is basically how this works like this. So, new shape, new rules. Oh, and if also, if you give this area a quick little click, you can actually choose the width and height manually, should you wish to, to do that. In this case, I'm good with what I have. Now, the polygon. This one's a little bit of a trickier business. The way that this works is if I give this area a quick little tap, I could choose the radius or basically how round and big it's going to be and the sides. Now by default, the polygon sides are put to six, so it looks something like this. Now if I don't change anything in there and I just click and drag, this is how it's gonna be working. But if I give this area a quick little tap, I can either choose to make this a, uh, let's see, like an octagon Or I could change these sides to be something more like this. Almost looks like a sign that you would see on the street. Or if I want to just make a perfect triangle, I could change the sides to three, and I get myself a triangle. So some of these options that we have here are going to have elements like that. So it's always good to experiment every now and then, at least for the shapes. Now the last one I'm going to show, uh, for now, is going to be the star tool. I'm going to go back to the line segment at a later time, but with the star tool, similar deal, give it a quick little tap, and you could choose the amount of points and the radius one and radius two. Now, what these basically represent is basically how the indentations and the outer spikes basically apply to this. If I give this area a quick little tap, if I make the radius one a little bit less, say, for example, I make this about 15, and the radius down here about 75, keeping the same points the same way, you're gonna see a significant change in the shape. This could be helpful, it might not be so much. And again, you could always just delete what's unnecessary. <laughs> and of course, uh, the obvious is the points, basically the less that you have, the less uh, of these elements you're gonna see. And likewise, if you have more, this case I put on eight it's gonna come out a lot more so you have to be a little careful with this uh, not go too crazy but uh, again if you want to experiment that's not a bad idea now so this basically is all the shapes how the layers work last thing I want to show is how to make some simple manipulations now to do that we're gonna need a new tool the one that we're gonna be using for this is what's called the direct selection tool now how this works is we select the direct selection tool, AKA the white arrow. And then basically you can select any sh shape that we choose. And if you just click and drag what's called anchor points, cause you'll see these come up. You'll see that you have a little bit more influence on the default shapes that we have here. Now something to keep in mind, a rectangle has these perfect points like what we have over here or what's called corners. 
So that's why it works the way that it does. Now, areas that are rounder are going to have these little handles over here, which is going to affect the way that the curve is done on our piece. As long as those handles are basically a little bit further out, that's the way that this is going to be working. So if I was to go over here, if I uh, take the handle a little out, you'll see that it kind of stretches out like so. If I move this up, the other side moves down and vice versa. Now we're going to keep this relatively on the simple side for at first. We will get more complicated with some of the shapes a little later on. But again, if it has an anchor over here that's a corner, it basically just kind of brings it in like so. Relatively simple stuff. Hmm. All right. And once again, I'm not a big, exactly a big fan of any of these, so I'm actually just going to select all of them and delete. So just a quick review what we talked about. We talked about making shapes, starting with the rectangle tool and ending at the star tool. We talked about uh, making these uh, shapes and seeing them in the layers over here. You're just going to see every time we make a new shape, there's something new going on over here. That's normal and OK. Uh, we also talked about uh, the properties area and basically how the fill and stroke kind of coincide with these elements over here. And we also talked about uh, how you can manipulate elements by going to the direct selection, aka the white arrow, and just selecting the anchors and occasionally the handles to make your manipulations. So looking at the time, I'd actually like to stop here for now. So went over a lot of stuff. Uh, what we're going to go over next time is we're going to go over uh, our own uh, shape creators, like the pen tool, the curvature tool, etc., and a couple of tools that I wouldn't really recommend, but you should still see what happens with those. And with that, I think we're going to call it at this time, and hopefully you enjoyed this video.